Hello, this is Rosalind Khan, and I'm with Andres Andre. <laughs> Andre, it is such a pleasure and honor to be with you here in Thank the beautiful you. San Gabriel. I've I've heard so much about you, and in our short time, it's just, it's just wonderful to see how you know, and I know, and he knows, and she knows, and so <laughs> on and so forth. And so. Um, the first thing I, I want to say is it's truly an honor to be an invited guest to your studio. I know you've had had people like my friend Chili Willie and his 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 partner out here, and there's so many people we know, and we both share a love for kids. Yes. And so you are a recording artist yourself. Mm -hmm. You help other performers go ahead and get their music out there. So let's go ahead and start from the beginning. How how did you get started in this world of music? When when did it start? How old were you when it all began? I want to say probably like seven or six or seven, just in the living room, and mom and dad were playing the records, and my sisters, and uh, I just took a liking to the music. I mean, obviously it, it's great, but as I got a little bit older, I felt like there's something else about the music that moves me. It moves my spirit as much as moves my feet. So, I, um, yeah, it's always been in my blood. It's always been around me and I felt it was a, a great form of expression. So um, so that's, that's the beginnings of where I, where I started with everything. You know, there's an interesting quote I heard this morning from this morning meditation group I want to share with you. And it talks about the power of prayer. And it says, it's, it's not the words we say, but it's the emotion that we feel inside. And when you went ahead and said that it's, it's the music and that, that feeling that you have inside, People pray in mantras of different words, and it, it just it resonated. I, I see a similarity and a connection there. Now, was your family all involved in music, or um, surprisingly not? You know, you would think like my father or my mom or anything. My sisters, you know, we all love music. My dad was very artistic. He was artistic in a different way. He was very artsy and different looking, and um, so I think I believe that my my musical artist side was from my dad. So tell us a little bit about, I'm curious about what was he artsy in and in which, which ways did, did that come about? He was a very outside of the box thinker. He's from New Orleans uh -huh. and he was just a, just a different, he just had a different vibration in life. Um, he would, we, I remember driving with him and he, we would, he would stop over and say, look at that piano right there and the piano's all broken. He goes, we're going to fix that. And I'm like, what are you talking about, Dad? And he's like, help me get it on the on the on the truck, you know. So I helped him, and he would make something beautiful out of that. Like he would fix it or or create something out of nothing, you know. And he was very artistic. At that time, I was kind of embarrassed, but as I got a little bit older, I, I can appreciate it, you know. That his eye was different, and uh, you know, I, I love him and I appreciate him and I miss him. You know, it's really interesting. When we finish, we're going to go on my phone, and every Sunday I go out in the neighborhood. And I'll just see something that's interesting that attracts my attention. Mm -hmm. I will create art out of it. Yes. One day I saw a blue and white tire. It was on a big truck, and I said, "It's, it's just too plain as a blue and white tire." <laughs> and I just put all these flowers on. If you go on my Instagram page, you can see it. And another day, I found a piece of cardboard that was like the sun, and I just created this piece out of it. Wow. I saw a vine hanging out of it out of a wall and I just put flowers on it, it was beautiful. Oh, wow. And this last week I saw a broken piece of furniture ready for the dump. <laughs> and so you said ready for the dump, there's there's something yeah. out of it. And so it's it's no no stranger the two of us are here because there's a connection, you know, mm -hmm. back to the roots of where you were and where I was. Yes. So from that, did your sisters do do music as well? What did they do in the musical world? Um, I mean, they sang in choirs and different things, but nothing professionally. Uh, I'm, I'm the only one out of my family who has uh, kind of taken this this whole musical journey on a professional route, and uh, I'm proud. I'm proud that I was able to kind of step forward. And uh, but with their backing you know, on their love and support, it's definitely helped me. You've always got to have that thing for people who's behind you that, that tells you you can, you can now. So you started at seven. Where, where did the big break come in? I want to say the big break came in, I want to say a little, probably a little bit after high school. I was more of a, a late bloomer, um, kind of more of an ugly duckling syndrome in a sense because um, I'm mixed uh, three races and 
I wasn't sure how to identify with my races, different things on black, white, and Filipino. Wow. Uh, so I wasn't sure, you know, and, and growing up, I was like very insecure about the way I looked, my hair and, you know, everything. So I felt like after I got out of high school, that's when I got a little bit more confidence, you know. The girls that I had big crushes on weren't really into me at all <laughs> until after I got out of high school. Um, but my big break came um, when I, after high school, really started to, um, I met Mr. Mike C. Mike C is a, a wonderful, amazing producer in the industry, and uh, he's worked with a lot of 90s, 2000 R&B acts, mm -hmm. wonderful legends. And so I, he kind of took me under his wing. I'm this little kid, and um, I met him through um, through an agency where we, we uh, auditioned for like a boy band. Oh, wow. And they, they took a liking to me. I was part of this group, and he really took a liking to me because I was really very young, shy, but serious about writing, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't really know much about creating music then, mm -hmm. but I had a really good pen uh, to, to uh, the knack to write melodies and lyrics, so he took a liking to me on that aspect, um, so that, that really was kind of like my break into the industry, mm -hmm. um, and I'm really grateful for him, he's a wonderful guy. Wow, yes. and so that was a lucky break, and then, and then what happened next? So then um, we did the boy band thing for a little bit, uh, I, I, I was supposed to be doing stuff for MTV, in the boy band sector, um, but it just didn't really work out for me. Uh, I'm a little bit of a, uh, very quiet. And with MTV, they want you to be very extra. And loud and out there. Loud. And for whatever reason, I, um, it just wasn't the best fit for me. So I st stepped away from that situation, but I met some um, uh, management from American Idol. They took me under their wing, and from that point, I was able to travel to the Philippines, do lots, lots of cool shows, since I'm part Filipino, and I really appreciate it. I did open up for like the Pussycat Dolls and all these wonderful big wow. acts, and just little old me, you know? Wow. And, and I'm, and I'm doing that, and that was like a huge step. No, so it goes to show we go from nowhere to somewhere, yes. and you take it to American Idol, which <laughs> brings us to, we've got to take a break because it's such an exciting story. I want to hear more. Let's just take a quick break, and we'll be Hello right back. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Oakland Aviation Museum. This is a special museum for aircraft, historic GA, general aviation, and World War II airplanes here at the Oakland Airport. As you can see, it's now open seven days a week for the summer. And I wanted to show you around. This is an indoor and outdoor museum. This is the outdoor area. Over there we have a flying boat. There's not too many of those left. Here you can see the Douglas KA-3B Sky Warrior. Really cool. Let me take you inside the hangar. I'd love to show you around a little bit inside this hangar. It is home to so many wonderful planes. Here is a favorite of most people. It's a P-51 Mustang. Lots of red and blue. You can read up on it. You see the helicopter back there. It's always great to look at all the historic aircraft that you can't see in too many places. I'll just take you through this hangar right here. This is an Aronka. A lot of people got their start or had their first flight in this plane. Now we use more Cessnas. Come over here. And this is just a great place to come and visit to bring your family. As you can see, the ground is like a little runway. Like the Kitty Hawk corporate. And of course, that's the Wright Brothers. That's the Wright Brothers plane. There's always an exhibit in here. We have some engines. And this is the gift shop where you can get all of your favorite aviation goods. Thank you, and we hope to see you soon. Hi, this is Rosalind back at you. Here we are with Honoré. Hey. And he was just telling us the beautiful story of being a part of the American Idol and going out to the Philippines and performing mm -hmm. there. That must be the time of your life. What, what happened? Did you just keep going on and on? Or what, what, what happened? <laughs> it was a great, great experience. Um, yeah, I was able to travel in Manila, Quezon City. I, I did all the TV shows. I did the Araneta Coliseum. It was just like, I couldn't believe it. So I did that. But in the middle of it all, my, my father was very sick. And uh, unfortunately, he passed. Mm -hmm. So I was torn to continue to do this music. But then I lost my dad. So... 
obviously I came back home to LA and um, had to take care of the funeral arrangements and stuff and just grieved. You know, it was really, really challenging if anybody who loses their parent. Um, so I did that. Um, at that time, the, the labels and all the, the everything that I built up, everybody's like, well, what are you going to do? You know, and I'm like, well, can I, I asked the labels, can I fly back and forth? Well, would they be able to fly me back and forth? And they weren't in favor of that too much because of uh, the, the money factor. And it just took a lot of time. So I just was so disappointed and hurt. I, I So I chose to just stay in LA and just kind of grieve the best way I could. So I did that. Um, and it took me a while, it took me a few years. So I actually stopped. I actually stopped doing music. And I know a lot of people were like, what happened to Honoré? You know, and this is like, no, I lost my dad. So during that grieving process, I created this song called Father. Mm -hmm. And it was my tribute to my dad. And uh, I released it and it went really well. Like a lot of people received it as one of those heartfelt songs. I mean, you know, and that was the start of like, waking it up again and turning the, the next chapter for my life and my musical career. I felt that my dad would want me to continue. And, and I did, and I stuck with it. I, uh, the money that I made on the road, I actually started to invest in studio equipment and you know, building my, my little empire here to be able to create you know, what I wanted. And I did that and I just kept producing and making great music and feeling happy again slowly. Oh, that's cool, and I'm gonna ask you a strange question. So back to your dad's quirkiness, was that part of the song? Um, yeah. I mean, my dad was a smoker, so um, uh, there's a lyric where I'm like, I'm now I'm here looking at these photographs. When you were born, when, when you were young, when I was born, it kind of made me laugh. Coolest person that I ever met with a cigarette. This is my dad. It's just really cool. So there's like little lines when, when you know, just seeing how my dad was, and he was a very very, he was a he was a, a very interesting looking man, a very handsome guy, and just a really cool dude. And you know, and when people say, "Yeah, you look like your dad," it makes me feel good that I'm still with him. So, so we, we take a sad story, we make it a happy story, yeah. in that you came from the American Idol, you wanted to, to go and come back, and your dad passes, and you, you make this music, and then it was publicly accepted that people really liked it, and yes. that's really footed your dreams to to get you where you are today. I mean. Yes. We, we talked to a lot of people. I just interviewed Wanda Ray Willis, and she was talking about the separation and divorce that she had, that she had to go back home and she didn't have very much money. And, you know, it's it's the painful points in our life that, that bring the artists, whether it's Leonardo da Vinci or many people, they take the, the deepest, darkest of sorrows to, to, create, to create greatness and beauty. And there's an old saying that if it was always a great day every day, we, we wouldn't come to appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's how we turn those insides and turn them inside out. So where is that taking to you now? You, you, you do all sorts of music, you produce all sorts of music. Mm -hmm. And what part of the percentage of your time is producing your own stuff versus working with your, with your other people you work with? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty non-stuff. Uh, let, let's just say I don't have much of a personal life. Um, but I love it. it, it it's, it's, you know, when music hits me, my hits my heart, my soul. It, it, I'm just so grateful to be able to come to my studio and create. You know, um, I have that luxury, and I'm like so. One, it's such a great feeling. Um, but yeah, I work with other artists. Um, but really, w with the music uh, creating my new album, Purple, it's been an ongoing process. It's been a few years in the making mm -hmm. to get to this point now, where it's like, because you you could create. I can create like. Let's say I, I create 100 songs, mm -hmm. and then to filter them down to like you know 12 or 13, you know, it's a lot. Right, know? right. Because right. you want to, at least for me, I wanted to have. What does it mean? You know, there, what's the theme? You know, and I wanted that. I, I still believe in the old school albums and stuff. You know, I'm, I'm a Prince student. I'm a Prince fan, and you know, I believe in that. You know, and just having some type of, you know, what is what, what do you what do you, what do you want your listeners to, to come away with? Walk away. Right. It's really important to me. So you talk about Prince being an idol to you. What, what ways have you looked up and have you emulated his work and what you do? He is the greatest, in my opinion. Um, what I take from him, I, I'm, his, he was a teacher. He really was. He taught me about creating your own music, writing your own music, uh, taking ownership of your music, uh, being a leader. Um, he was a very short guy. Uh, from my understanding, he was 5'2", wore high heels. He's a black man, and, and he, he did it all. You know, and, and it's just when you when you really dive into his career to understand more than just the purple rain aspect, he was the greatest, and he, he will always be the greatest. And I learned everything from Prince.
Wow, yes. that is that is absolutely amazing. So much that you can learn, so much that a teacher. And then there's a family member of yours who was connected to him. How did, how did that all come about? Yeah, um, just people in, in my, um, I have people in my family who are, are connected with just random artists and entertainers and stuff. So I was able to like, uh, they took me to Paisley Park, you know, and that's where he lived in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. I went to Paisley Park and I was able to like, I never met Prince, so I got very close to meeting him um, before he passed years ago. Um, but I'm so grateful for the experiences and his music lives on within me. Um, and uh, you'll hear some influences of Prince uh, possibly in my music, but just ownership and just creating stuff, you know, and writing and just really, if you want to do something, you, you make it happen. And I, I learned that from Prince. Wow, wow. So how many hours is an average day for you in working? What time do you get up? What time do you go to sleep? Um, honestly, I'm an early bird. I, I love to get up early. Um, I like to start my day off at the gym and uh, create, you know, um, I probably could go to bed at night, you know, I don't get that much rest and I know people are like, you need to rest more, you know, but I'm like, I'm so energized with, with the music and when it hits you, it, it, it takes over, you know, it's, it's hard to do anything else, at least for me, so. I'm right, awesome. well you talk about it, it takes you over, we're going to take a quick break and come back and hear some of your musical hits from your recent upcoming stuff. All right. Let's give it away to Honoré, hey. coming back real soon. Grandmother had Alzheimer's and I remember we were all in the hospital room and for like 10 seconds she recognized who we were and then it was gone. So it's like a thief, it's taking away memories and um, who you are as a person. Over five and a half million Americans have Alzheimer's. That number may double by 2050. For more information, visit rightfocus.org. Senior Care Authority is a one-stop solution for helping you locate senior living options. We understand the care, the costs, and the safety records of hundreds of communities, from assisted living and memory care to independent living and even skilled nursing. We help families cut through the complexity to make courageous, informed decisions under difficult circumstances. Hi, welcome back. This is Roslyn with Chow Entertainment, Living Your Best Life in KGNG in Las Vegas. We are here with Honoré, and we're going to hear about the wonderful music he's created and how it's taken him to the stars. That's right. So Honoré, you've been working on this album. How long has that album taken you to get to? So, uh, I want to say like pre-COVID, you know, COVID times till now. Um, just the, the trials and tribulations of life going down, up and down. <laughs> right, 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 right. And you said there are 13 songs on this. Now, did you make all those 13 songs during the, the pandemic? Yeah, actually I made 13, probably plus 60 more. Um, you know, when, when you created an album, you know, I just kept recording and then trying to filter down to what would make the most sense. So I, I did my best for 13. Wow, you do best for 13. Now you've got a really special song for us. What's what's the story behind the song that we're going to listen to? Yeah, this song is called Purple, and that's actually the name of the album, um, which is going to be released July 15th. I'm excited. Um, yeah, to me, purple is, is my favorite color, obviously. Uh, for me, it's like the color of love. It's royalty. It's just beautiful. And this song, it's just really about that feeling of love, you know, the, the energy, uh, how, it, how it can be medicinal to you and all that stuff. So yeah, purple. 
Cool. Yes. Well, why don't we go ahead and take a quick break and let's let's go ahead and listen to that. I want to hear this, hear what okay. this song is all about. So take it away, on. There you right? go. There you yes. go. So I've got my magenta and a little there purple in here. So yeah. I was dressed for the occasion and yes. went yes. versus my royal blue. <laughs> but, you know, you got to come out with the summer. So That's right. the, the story was about a love. Yes. Yes. It's a love. It's a feeling of love. And you don't, you, you know, you're just taken over by it, the energy of it. You know, and then it's to, to the point where you're, you feel lifted. And I, I felt that way when I was writing this song. And I'm very grateful for the inspiration and, and the love I have for myself for, for, the fans, the world, you, everybody. Oh, Perfect. that's wonderful. Yes. So so what's the next best thing that's happening to you these days? You know, I think really just being able to have the courage. Um, I recently rec got a recording contract with Estherbrook World Records. Uh, we signed the deal a few months ago and Great. we're actually releasing the album under under the label. So I'm super excited about it. So that's like the most recent best thing. And just having the, the courage to, to put your heart and soul out there. And July 15th, Purple's out, I'm ready to go and I wanna just, have the world listen to it and enjoy it. Fantastic, and, and what's the social media people can follow you on? Yes, you can follow me on uh, Instagram at Honore Music, that's H-O-N-O-R-E Music. You can follow me there. All, you can uh, DM me there, uh, all my music, all the links are there, and uh, that's the best way to find me. Cool, well, yes. my name is Rosalind Khan. I'm with Chow Entertainment, Living Your Best Life, and KGNG out of Las Vegas. We're on Amazon Prime, we're on Roku TV, and the most exciting thing happening to me is a month from about today, I'm going to be landing in Hergata, Egypt. Ooh. I, Rosalind Khan, will be interviewing a diplomat that we broadcast all over the world. Wow. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to get some of your music out there and we can share it with you. Excellent. So you can follow me on all social media with just Rosalind Khan. It's Chow Entertainment Group Group where you can go to my YouTube and you can see it all. I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart and say it's been a pleasure and honor to, to come out here in beautiful San Gabriel to this beautiful <laughs> place. Thank you. And check out your studio that's yeah, yeah. got the fame and the fortune and everything yes. else. So thank you. gratitude. Take care. Thank, thank you so much. So we have these guys here are loquats. Uh -huh. We have cherries and then more cherries. And this is our very okay, last day of cherry there. season. Last, so, how long does cherry season last? For us, it lasts about six weeks. So we only have cherries for six weeks and then they're done. <laughs> wow. Is, is that the shortest life of any of the things that you make or are there other things that also have a short life of, of growth and production? Well, for cherry season, um, it's our most important crop. So we do grow some things that have a shorter season like boysenberries. We'll only have boysenberries for maybe two weeks wow. or three weeks. Um, but the most important thing are the cherries. Wow. Um, what are some of the creative things that people can do with cherries besides cherry pie and cherry jam? So a lot of times when people make cherry pie and cherry jam, that it requires sour cherries, but a lot of people eat them fresh. There's people that pickle them. People cook them with meat dishes. Some people cook them with uh, chicken or duck. Uh, there's other chefs that they make sauces out of them. Um, Spago buys, uh, which is Wolfgang Puck's restaurant. Mm -hmm. He buys our cherries every single week that we have them. Wow. And uh, yeah, we, we send cherries everywhere people want cherries. Now, you mentioned to me something about speaking different languages. Sure. Can, can you say a few words in some of the different languages that you speak? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, so... Um, eu falo um pouco de português. Bom, eu posso falar português melhor que um pouquinho, mas... Um, eu estive no Brasil para um pouquinho de tempo para ter, uh, ter algumas frutas tropicais. Um, um, também eu falo espanhol porque eu sou do campo. Eu sou aqui em El Campo, quase todos os sonos são espanholantes. Um, okay, so let's stop a quick second. So sure. the first one was in Portuguese? Yep. Okay, tell us what you said in Portuguese. Uh, I, that, I, I said basically that um, I was in Brazil for a while and I, I like Brazil because there's lots of exotic fruits there. Um, uh, 
Brazil is a very interesting country. Brazil is a very interesting country. Right. Um, and there's lots of different fruits and stuff there. Okay, so now the Spanish one was. Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead and I, say I the Spanish one and say it again. Okay. Um, pues, yo soy del campo. I'm from the countryside. Uh, in el campo, casi todos los personas que viven allá son hispanohablantes. So, in the countryside, most of the people that live there are Spanish speakers. Um, and then, um, aussi j'ai tout le français pour du monde le secondaire et j'aime tout le fruit de France. So I, I, I studied French for two years in the during secondary, which I guess is high school. Um, and I'm interested in exotic fruits, you know. Um, me piace molto italiano, ho stato in la città di Siena per due mesi per aprendere italiano. Um, I like Italian, I was in Siena, Italy, in Toscana uh, for two months to learn Italian. Uh, I speak Chinese, I studied at Peking University. Uh, um, I know a little bit of, Guano, of, of Cantonese. Um, yeah. My name is Steven. Um, this is my farm in Japanese. Um, what other languages? Um, yeah, had a show Um I know a little bit of Russian. Uh, what did that mean? Huh? Oh, it was Russian yes. saying I know a little bit of Russian. <laughs> wow. Uh, and then Nina uh, Fahamo Kiswahili ki dogo. So I, I also know a little bit of Kiswahili. I spent a summer in Tanzania studying uh, Kiswahili. Kapunkap um, would be you know just thank you in Thai. Um, and then I don't know other languages. I know I've studied other. Languages. Oh. Uh, Mi chatas parlo en Esperanto. Uh, Esperanto estas una lengua. Um, yeah, so, so Esperanto, I, I know a little bit of Esperanto, which is an artificial language. And I've been Hamish Arabe, so I don't speak Arabic. Ich uh, spreche kein Deutsch, I don't speak German either. Um, yeah, I don't know, there's other languages. So we got an interesting man. Uh, so this is a very enchanting, Stephen Murray is an amazing guy. He's a person who dropped out of school because he missed the deadline. He upset his parents because he was a dropout. They sent him to Mexico and he didn't know why he would, they sent him there, but then he started learning language. Yep. He didn't just learn languages, he opened up opportunities. When he dropped out of school, he went back and he won a number of different awards. Mm -hmm. He won awards at Bakersfield, he won awards at other schools that he combined the areas that he got four majors at. He's now learning multiple languages. He's the, the, the top person of having fruits of different rare cultures of the world and the guy is amazing. Nurse Access Staffing is seeking experienced RN and LVNs. For more information, call us at 818-697-4484 or check us out on our website, nurseaccessstaffing.com.